I am here with John Ramdeen, at John Ramdeen on Twitter, yeah, and me. we have lots to discuss. And the UFC Fight Night card that is coming up in Las Vegas. To me, John, this card, when you sit down and look at it, this to me, in a nutshell, is the strength that the UFC has. When you can see the depth yeah. they have, that this is a week out from a pay-per-view card, it's a month out from where they'll run three straight nights in Las Vegas, and look at the heavy artillery they have on this fight night card. Hen and Burrell yeah. coming up to featherweight, not even in the main event. Sarah McMahon and Jessica I, not even main card. Zaffodine. Al Jermaine Sterling and <laughs> Brian Caraway is on fight pass, yeah. and of course headlined by two unbeaten bantamweights. I mean, for a free fight night card, this is a really outstanding card, I feel. Yeah, I love it. And you pointed out the 135-pound picture, and I think that's kind of the story of this fight card. I think a lot of people believe that both Thomas Almeida and Cody Garbrandt are the future of the division. However, the division is super stacked. You look at the top of the mountain, Dominic Cruz going to be taking on Uriah Faber. you got TJ Dillashaw in the mix. I don't know if we'll ever see Hennon Brow go back down to 135 pounds. We have some great stars at the top of the division. Things are uh, progressing nicely. Who knows? Brian Caraway, he could be the guy. A lot of people expect it's going to be Al Jermaine Sterling because his you know, you look at his career and it seems to be on the rise. I don't think a lot of people have been really overly impressed with Caraway. We know that he's tough. We know that he's super skilled. It's, we need to see him put things together against some of the top guys in the division. This is his opportunity to silence a lot of people, but he's going to be in tough because uh, Aljo's pretty friggin' talented. Yeah, I think this is a pretty good test for Sterling when you look at things. I think this is, he has to win over Takeya Mizugaki, which I think is the big win you can look at for Sterling. Johnny Eduardo, I don't think that was really a sure. step up after Mizugaki. But, but Brian Caraway, I think some people sleep on him. He is a great grappler, and I think this is a good fight for Sterling and where he's gonna go within this 135 pound pick. Yeah, and I think if you think about that, Brian Caraway has that wrestling grappling background. Aljamain Sterling has that wrestling background, so I would imagine that this fight will be contested on the feet. And based on what we've seen from Aljamain Sterling, you feel that he, you get the sense that he is the better stand-up guy, especially working with Ray Longo and Al Quinta and that whole team that uh, the former middleweight champion Chris Wyden works with. So a lot of opportunities for Aljamain Sterling, who is Brian Caraway working with to make sure that he is ready to handle the top of the 135 pound division. Yeah, and that main event at 135 yeah. pounds, you have two unbeaten bantamweights. These two have 28 pro fights, two decisions between <laughs> yeah. them. I mean, this is in the five round main event position, but one that I don't think anyone is anticipating going five rounds. Maybe Gabe will go the under on this one. I think <laughs> yeah. that would be uh, your wise choice, but. You just never know because re really, as I'm talking about, the division is, it's, it's a talent rich division, but both, it's especially you have to know because these guys are in the main event slot and you look at some of the guys that are underneath them why isn't Hennem Burrell why isn't the former 135 pound champion in that main event spot is because they believe that both of these guys are the future of the division and because of that they might they probably may closer fight. to title fights than the other two that, as that, well that's right so you'd imagine they might fight conservatively knowing what is on the line uh, some other fights I wanted to discuss. Eric Koch, who has <laughs> been kind of forgotten about yeah. at 155 pounds. It's been two years. Yeah. This guy's been severely hampered by injuries throughout his career, but it's been a two-year break. Uh, we saw him return to 155 pounds after competing at 145, and he draws Shane Campbell, who has been active and a product of Toshido uh, Martial Arts out in Kelowna, BC. He's coming off that loss to James Krause, who's a very tough lightweight. And I think Eric Koch, this is gonna be a, a tough task for him coming back with with that two-year layoff, you don't know how he's going to look in this yeah, fight. Shane Campbell he really is a talented individual. He is meant to fight, you know, whether it's in the world of kickboxing or in the world of mixed martial arts. You said this fight is 155 pounds. Shane Campbell, I had a chance to talk to him, and he said, you know, his goal for 2016 is to find himself in the top 10 of the 170-pound division. So I'm not sure if he's going to be long for 155 pounds. He is a big individual, but he is so fun to watch. He's a master of the world of Muay Thai and kickboxing but m more specifically this guy is a scrapper and right as soon as he got to the UFC he's facing tough individuals so it's going to be a very long or short night for Eric Koch. And our own Cody Saftik had a chance to speak with Shane Campbell and here is a quick highlight of that chat with the UFC lightweight. I, I do have an understanding that he's been training with uh, Askren for the last couple years so um, probably 
having those newfound skills, he uh, will want to try to get it to the ground. And it's uh, the MMA is funny. Once someone gets punched in the head pretty hard, they start doing odd things, and uh, taking it to the ground is is something that that usually happens. I mean, in my first fight with in the UFC with with McDessie there, I I got, took a pretty hard hit and I shot for for the shot myself, right? And you can catch more of that interview coming up on today's edition of Fight News Now. Also in action will be Jessica I and Sarah McMahon. And these two are in unique positions. In the case of Jessica I, she already has a loss to Misha Tate. In the case of McMahon, losses to both Tate and Amanda Nunez, who are competing later on this summer. And in the sense, I think both of these women very much in need of victories at this point. Um, but kind of out of this title picture at the moment, but two very tough bantamweights. Yeah, I think what you have to look at is, you know, I, often I'll reference Rashad Evans because he said, you know, if you can't be a champion because the champions, only one person that in each division can be a champion, and if you can't be a champion, make yourself a prize fighter. Make your, stand out. Make sure that you're a commodity for the organization that you work for. And that's what I expect in this fight. They've all already had their opportunities to face the top girls at 135 pounds. Now they just have to go and put, out, put on a show. Because when you look at the top 10 of the division, as you pointed out, these girls have already faced some of the best in the world, either the current champions, former champions, or future title challengers. So they just have to look good. They have to keep keep their name out there and make sure the fans recognize that they're winners. And you would imagine that Sarah McMahon would have the advantage because of that, how high her wrestling is. Why stand and trade with this girl when you can hold her on the ground? However, we've seen over the last number of years, everybody's wrestling has uh, gone through the roof. Yeah, and I think Sarah McMahon is in an exceptionally difficult position because for a lot of the women there, Sarah McMahon represents a very tough style because of that wrestling. And at the same time, Beating Sarah McMahon, I don't think it means what it exactly. did 18 months ago where she, she's not at that level at this point. She's already contested for the championship and is coming off a pair of losses at this point. Yeah, and so that, credit that Jessica I is taking a very tough fight. Very true. So what do you do in that situation? Is How do you make yourself very valuable when you're facing a very dangerous opponent like Sarah McMahon who can you know, stifle your progress in, in, in the division? You have to smoke this girl. You have to come out on fire. You have to stop every single one of her takedowns, and you have to batter her so people watching at home say, oh, wow, this girl challenged for the title, and this girl made short work of her. So she does have an opportunity to, to shake things up, but she's going to have to take a lot of risks, and she's going to have to show her takedown defense is impeccable on that night. You've also got Lorenz Larkin in action <laughs> yeah. against Jorge Masvidal yeah, awesome. at 170 pounds, yeah. and a fight I know you'll be looking forward to. Uh, we're going to see Paul Felder yeah. back in action taking on Josh Berkman, uh, another fight at 155 pounds. And Paul Felder is someone that I think in qu a quick amount of time since debuting in 2014 for the promotion, just a very fun style of fighter. And Josh Berkman uh, got a, a big win against KJ Nunes in his yeah, last fight. Yeah, and, and like, like we were talking about, I said Rashad Evans said if you can't be a champion, you've got to be a, uh, a prize fighter. The goal is to always put on a show. And Paul Felder is one of these guys an action fighter and I'm not surprised that he's a teammate, friend and training partner of one Donald Cerrone. They're kind of cut from the same cloth and that's what we expect every time we tune into a Paul Felder fight. I, I don't think most people think, oh, this is a guy that's going to be challenging for the title. We wouldn't be surprised to see his, his progression over the next number of years, but it's all about the action of Paul Felder. That's why people tune in. We will have much more on this Fight Night card coming up on our preview show Thursday night, 7 p.m. Eastern time. Tune in as we break down the UFC's card headlined by Thomas Almeida and Cody Garbrandt.